There's another way you can calculate the pH of a buffer, and that is by using what's called the henderson hasselbalch equation. So on the board there you can see the method we've already talked about. So that's the hydrogen ion concentration of a buffer equals the acid dissociation constant for the weak acid multiplied by the concentration of that weak acid divided by the concentration of the salt. And I've got that silly way of remembering it, acid over salt. The henderson hasselbalch equation is basically a, a logarithmic form of this equation. So it tends to be preferred by the math mathematics students, um, but there's nothing wrong with this. But we are going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in a moment to explain some important um, features of buffer solutions and try and explain when they work at their very best. So what we're going to do is take logs on both sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take minus logs. So we know that minus log of H plus concentration is pH. The minus log of the Ka is the pKa. And these are terms that we are familiar with. And the rest of the equation, we say minus log acid concentration over salt concentration. Now, the henderson hasselbalch equation slightly modifies this and it turns that minus sign into a plus sign so the way it does that that stays the same plus log and instead of acid over salt it becomes salt over acid you can see a possible advantage of this equation and that's because when you plug the numbers in you get your pH answer straight out of this expression whereas when you do this method you have to minus log your H plus concentration to turn it into pH. So there's the henderson hasselbalch equation written up again and we're going to use it to explain this statement here. So buffers work at their best when the desired pH is equal to the pKa of the weak acid. So for example you know that a lot of skin products are buffered to pH 5.5 so the desired pH is 5.5 so ideally the weak acid used to make that buffer would have a pKa value of 5.5. We're going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation to explain why that's the case. So the first thing, obviously, if we want pH to be equal to pKa, we need this term to be equal to zero. So we want the log of the salt concentration over the acid concentration equal to zero. Now, the log of one is zero. So how are we gonna get one here? Well, we need to make the salt concentration equal to the acid concentration. So if salt equals acid concentration, we get log of 1 here. And when we, when we put that in the calculator, log 1 equals 0. And if you don't believe me, log of 1 equals 0. See, I wasn't lying. So if we visualise that, we've got the, the general form of the equilibrium system that's in an acidic buffer. So these box sizes are supposed to represent the relative concentrations of the acid and the salt. I've tried to make them the same size. So remember, buffers work best when the pH equals a pKa. So that's achieved when the acid concentration equals the salt concentration. And why is that a, the best scenario? Well, if you think about how buffers work, buffers have to respond to a change in the H plus concentration. So if you increase the H plus concentration, so you add acid, 
you need a large reservoir of the salt ion to react with the extra H plus and of course the equilibrium shifts over to the left. Correspondingly if you lower the H plus concentration by adding some base so remove the H plus concentration you need a large reservoir of weak acid to dissociate more and move over to the right and maintain the pH. So hopefully the, these boxes can help you to visualize that. We've already said that buffers work at their best when the pH equals the pKa. Now I'm um, extending that further to buffers work effectively. So in other words, they'll still work so long as the pH equals the pKa plus or minus one. And again, we're going to use henderson hasselbalch equation to explain why, and I'll visualize it for you using the boxes. We've got the henderson hasselbalch equation up now, and we're asking ourselves, what's going to make this term equal to plus one? So we'll end up with pH equals pK plus one. Well, it's actually 10. So the answer equals 10. So if we can get log of 10 here, then the log of 10 is 1. Log of 10 equals 1. And for those that don't believe me, log 10 equals 1. So in other words, we're talking about the scenario that the salt concentration is 10 times bigger than the acid concentration. So there's the visualization for that. So if we think about, well, why won't this, why well, this might start a struggle um, in terms of a buffer solution. So if we think about what it has to be able to do, if we add H plus ions to this, it needs to get rid of them. And how does it get rid of them? It needs a reservoir of salt ions to do that. Well, it's got that. So it's got plenty of salt ions, it can cope with the addition of acid. If we add base to this buffer, then obviously the H plus ions are removed, and so it needs to dissociate to put them back. Now you can see we've got a tiny concentration of HA relative to A minus, and it won't take very long before that's going to struggle to dissociate anymore. So the limit is this tenfold difference in concentration. And I'll show you what um, pK plus or minus 2 equals in a moment. If we just look at the opposite scenario to that, so in other words, if the acid concentration was 10 times bigger than the salt concentration, so there's the picture for that, the acid concentration is greater than the salt concentration by a factor of 10, then feeding into the henderson hasselbalch equation, we're going to get um, salt over acid is 1 over 10. So pH equals pKa plus log of 0.1. So log of 0.1 equals minus 1. So there's that minus 1 limit there. And again, you can see that this will struggle but the opposite way around. So this will cope fine if you add some base to this because we're going to lower the H+, plus, got a nice big reservoir of acid to dissociate and replace the H+. Plus. But if we add acid to this then there isn't very much salt ion to react with the extra acid that's gone in so it's going to struggle to shift over to the left. So if we just quickly consider, well, what would plus or minus 2 look like? So here's henderson Hasselbalch again. So we, if we want to get plus 2, for example, for this whole term here, we effectively need to work out log of 100. That's going to give us a 2. So in other words, the salt concentration would need to be 100 times bigger than the acid concentration. So let's visualize that. So the acid concentration is the small one. So there it is there. And that's in equilibrium with 
it's probably more than 100, but you get my point, don't you? Hopefully. A minus plus H plus. That is going to struggle, isn't it? It's going to be fine if you add H plus ions, but it's not going to be very good if you add base because the H plus ions will drop. There's hardly anything there to put any H plus ions back with, so the limit is plus or minus 1. We'll finish with this question. This is actually a real past paper question from an F325 paper. So you were given a list of weak acids and their pKa values. You were also given the formulae of the acids because uh, apart from benzoic acid, probably aren't familiar with the rest of them, especially their formulae. You were given some information to process and you're told about this very weird thing called the magic tang in sweets comes from an acidic buffer and a, a research and development team um, worked on this and they identified a pH of 3.55 for this buffer to create the perfect magic tang what a jobby the question was deduce the chemicals needed and calculate their relative concentrations for the perfect magic tang. Now this is obviously testing your knowledge and understanding of that rule we've just discussed, the plus or minus one. So the lactic acid is within that plus or minus one range. So we want a 3.55 pH and lactic acid's the closest to that 3.86. So that's the first mark. So there's the formula of lactic acid. That was given in the question. Now what would the other chemical be? Remember, to make a buffer we need a weak acid and a salt of a weak acid. So the one I'm going to go for is going to be sodium lactate. And that's going to look like that. So we're applying what we've been told in college about um, ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. We're just applying that to this more complicated example. There's the two equations you can use. I'm going to use this one because we've got pH and pKa in this equation and that's actually the data that we've got. You can do that one but I'm going to use that one. So if you think where are we heading with this question, we want to know the relative concentrations of the two components, the salt to acid. So I've got rid of the pKa by taking it over the other side and subtracting it. That's going to give me log of salt over acid and then I just need the um, inverse log and I'll get my answer. So we're nearly there, the log of the salt over acid comes out at minus 0.31 then if you just hit shift log that answer you get that gives you the salt over acid concentration and that comes out at 0 0.49. 0 0.49 is almost a half so in other words the acid needs to be twice the concentration of the salt.